streams of emails and text messages, non-stop online shopping and that infinite scroll on social media, plus the explosion of AI and other advanced tech. Our digital demands just keep growing and along with them, the need for places to store all that data. So where does it all go? Well, these days, into the cloud. But the cloud isn't up there in the sky. It's actually down here on Earth, taking the form of data centers. Essentially, buildings stuffed with servers. But with more data and more data centers, we need more and more power. And that ends up translating into more greenhouse gas emissions. Data centers consume between 200 and 400 terawatt hours of electricity globally every year, as much as some countries, with about 40% of that burned on cooling. Estimates vary on carbon emissions from more than 1% to up to 5% of the global total, roughly in line with the aviation industry. Data centers also use vast amounts of water for cooling and create noise pollution. The true impact, though, is hard to gauge. The collection and uh, reporting of sustainability related data and the calculation of related metrics is patchy at best. And many operators will struggle to meet emerging sustainability of reporting requirements along with the requirements of some customers and the public. Most of the data centers of the world are not um, these giant uh, big tech uh, kind of data centers that you see in in uh, many films and so forth. They're actually smaller in scale. They don't have the resources. They're not as high tech or sophisticated. And as a result, they also don't have a lot of information or insight into their environmental impacts. Hot Tropical Singapore is one nation working to transform data centers. It hosts more than 70 of these facilities and it's being selective about building new ones, emphasizing sustainable growth and low carbon emissions. Authorities set a standard this year as part of efforts to get DC operators to gradually increase temperatures to 26 degrees Celsius and higher. And last month, the government unveiled a data centre testbed focused on developing energy-efficient cooling technologies customised for tropical environments. As many of you all know, data centres support our digital economy and that's, that's critical. We cannot do without them, but we need to make them greener. It's a view shared by companies such as Singapore's Imperian DC. The up-and-coming player has a small portfolio dedicated to being lean and green from the outside in. How do we ensure that we're thinking about it holistically and not just at the rack level or at the server level, right? Because every little bit counts. That includes nudging temperatures higher, constantly upgrading technology while properly managing e-waste and keeping even the small stuff inside, such as reducing water usage in the bathrooms. The, the end goal is really to be able to tap off the grid clean energy. 100% would be ideal, unlikely for years to come, but even 50, even starting 10, 20, 30, 50 percent, I think that's really where you want to get to because that's truly measurable. What's measurable is also important to the folks at Google. For six years, they've matched 100 percent of their global annual electricity consumption with purchases of renewable energy. The moonshot for 2030, running on carbon-free energy all day, every day, everywhere. Now, obviously, this is very challenging, right? Like even, even with the renewable energy, the most advanced renewable energy markets that we have now, the sun is not going to shine 24 hours a day, the wind is not going to blow 24 hours a day. So we have to really work with governments, uh, uh, energy producers, renewable energy generators to make sure that the grid is set up and properly equipped in order to make this transition. This translates to encouraging governments to tweak regulations and investing in scores of renewable energy projects globally, but also installing more efficient chips, using machine learning to slash power consumption and thereby emissions, even giving customers a chance to pick where in the world they want to run their cloud computing to meet their own sustainability goals. Customers are demanding it. Governments are demanding it. You know, it is a business imperative that they have to become more sustainable. Uh, and I think, I think a lot of companies recognize this. And, and that's, that I think that's why you see there's a greater push in the industry in general to have more sustainable data centers. Researchers are also part of that push. A team at Nanyang Technological University is using a non-conductive liquid to spray cool CPUs. So with, with this invention, 
there is no chiller bay cooling system required to cool the data center. The only energy demanding uh, equipment would be the pump and the fan. So that result in 26% saving in the total energy consumption and also 26% in terms of carbon footprint. Associate Professor Wong Tekneng says this technology could be scaled up to help cool data centres, a potential solution in wider efforts to confront the climate crisis. Sustainability and reduced carbon footprint is, uh, is everyone's responsibility right now. So these are the path that uh, we all have to moving towards to design more innovative cooling solution to help to, to solve all these uh, grand challenge of uh, the global warming. For people who track data centres, the path to a more sustainable future isn't just about tech solutions. It's also about societies understanding this growing part of our world. You could compare it to the transition that's underway in transport. We can't live without planes, trains and automobiles. And so we need cleaner options. It's not that we don't need the cloud. We do. We need the cloud every day. And it's undeniable how important data centers are for day-to-day -day life. And that's indisputable. And the expansion does not look like it's uh, going to um, in any way have a downturn in the next few years. We have to be, we have to raise awareness. The public needs more awareness. More awareness about something that's going to be hard to ignore. The backbone of our increasingly digital world, but one that more and more people feel must join other sectors on the road to sustainability as we work to ensure our own survival. Ilakia Silvaraji, CNA.